<laughs> Let's get into some superlatives for these teams that are jockeying for these play-in spots, the sixth seed in this race. So this is where I want to start. Oof, I forgot. Thick that saves lives. Um, the most at stake. Who you guys got? Most at stake? Go ahead. i give it to the OG first. This is first. easy. The Western Conference has a gentleman that's in the conversation of greatest basketball player of all time mm. who also just broke the score record, but he's not getting any younger. The Los Angeles Lakers. Oh. oh. If Anthony Davis and LeBron James are both healthy and they miss the playoffs, mm. oh my goodness, they won't be able to live. I don't that know. Down. I don't know who I got most at stake. Put it up there. <laughs> oh, that's why the you want to go first. You know why? <laughs> you, that's why I want you to go first. You know why the Mavericks? It's because there's been so much confusion right now, and the reason why I say this: Luca is not happy. When superstars aren't happy, yeah. we know the way this is. It's a player's league, good or bad, say whatever you want. And they're doing things. They're taking risks. They're mm. trying to figure out. They're bringing in superstars. Things aren't clicking. But the number one person that you're worried about is making sure that that guy that's going to be a 12-time more all-star future MVP, right. he's happy. All right. I, I like that. I, okay. I think I'm going to be with you on the Mavericks. Okay. Um, Jalen Rose, the highest ceiling, who do we think? The highest ceiling is, again, these Los Angeles Lakers. And here's why. They won a championship with this dynamic duo in the bubble, right? So now say they, for example, get into the playoffs at, say, a uh, seven seed. Mm. Okay. Or uh, a six seed. Mm -hmm. You now get a chance to go against a team that hasn't been there or done that, maybe like Memphis, right. potentially. Sacramento. Sacramento, probably. And I'll ask Richard Jefferson this. If the Lakers were to play the Kings in the first round. Oh, Lakers. Lakers. I'm taking Lakers. I'll take Lakers. <laughs> so who has the highest ceiling? Well, who's got the highest ceiling? Roll, roll it up. Let's see who we got. <laughs> the Warriors. You know why Ooh, I, I like picked the Warriors? See, I kind of know. I, I know what I picked. But the reason why it's the Warriors is because, look, they are that team. They've been struggling with stuff. They had a tough preseason. Obviously, we know it's all been talked about. But I think the thing that's most important about the Warriors is that they're a great team at home. They're getting a little bit better on the road, but you don't know. They're still the defending champs, and I'm not taking out any champ until they take themselves out. So if they're Fair. involved, they're the highest ceiling. But I have to say this. They may win a first-round series, but they ain't winning the West without winning. Without who? Without Wiggins. Amen. Well, right. they're, not, they're not winning the West without Wiggins. Right. so important to them Biggest in the finals. question mark. I remember who I said. Who'd you Roll say? Roll at the Pelicans, right? Zion Williamson. Yep. That is why, because they reached as high as, I think, one or two in, in the West, right? So they were rolling. He was bowling. You got Brandon Ingram. You got all the pieces there, but his health. That's the question. So, if he comes back healthy over these final seven, eight games that they have, and he starts getting into a rhythm, will they will they go back to being a top three team in the conference? That's why that's the biggest question mark. Without him, they are a seven, eight, nine. With him, they are a three, two, four, somewhere in that range. I don't think they're the best team with him, but they're in the top three or four with him. Not that I haven't seen Kevin Durant be one of the greatest players of all time. Sure. But he could also be the answer to this. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, great minds think alike. He got to be Zion. <laughs> yeah! He got to be Zion. Like, I, here, know. Here, here, I didn't even know my answer. Here's a guy that, when healthy, is giving you 27 points to 60-plus percent from the field. Brandon Ingram is the reigning Western Conference Player of the Week. If they get this guy back first healthy, team all NBA, mm -hmm. they got a chance to do He's something special. He's a first special. team all NBA caliber player. That's what you're looking for. And player you want to least face, right? So I thought about I thought about Steph, right, and the Warriors, right? But then I remember LeBron and the Lakers beat Steph and the Warriors last time they yep. were in the play in. So player I least want to see is LeBron. And it's not just because he's in Brian James. That's not what I want to hear. One, this man knows how to dissect a game. He knows how to dissect a team. He's won game sevens in multiple playoff series, including a championship. So if you put this individual in a one game situation in the play-in, there's not a person in either conference that I think that you truly don't want to see, mm. especially in the, from the teams that are in that range. I'm going to go with the guy that puts up astronomical numbers like no other player in the league on the perimeter. Luca, because when you get he and Kyrie Irving in the playoff series mm, and the yeah. game slows down, yeah. who you gonna double team? Yeah, it's just getting and scary. now all of a sudden, Luca gets you on the mid post, Kyrie gets you on the swing action. Kyrie is a champion. I don't have to tell you no, this. You do not. You yeah. were getting a ring when he made the right, right side jump shot at Golden State. Yeah. So I wanna see these guys 
in the playoffs together. Now, the one thing I will say about this play it one game situation playoff series for me wise, bro, they are so god awful at every statistical oh, yeah, defensive yeah. category. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm not yeah, talking yeah. like they're in the ranks of the of the of the Houston's of the uh, hey, Houston's hey, of the hey, Detroit. Hey. They're oh. in that range. It's like it's like them. Houston, Detroit, like all of the worst teams in the league. Offensively, they're up in the middle. They right. have all the talent. Defensively, I can't trust a single team that is that bad defensively, That's even fair. if they're a 7-8 seed. But That's when fair. you look at who has the most at stake, and you're saying it's the Dallas Mavericks, and the player you least want to face, being Luka Doncic, that could be a pretty lethal combination. Mm, yes. right. He Good is point. going to be motivated, yes. right, to get out of this category that we're looking at. But here. none of those teams are in the highest seed. They do have an opportunity to clinch a playoff spot with an off night tonight. If the Warriors lose to the Pelicans, the Kings will clinch their first playoff appearance since 2006. Now, Golden State has won three straight and six of its last seven at home against New Orleans. So, back here with our whole panel. The Timberwolves, they moved out of the play-in and into the sixth seed. And if the playoffs were to start today, they would be matched up against the Kings in the first round. So, Zach, do you think the Wolves have a legitimate chance here of upsetting Sacramento? Let me preface this no, by no, saying no, 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 no. the least relevant words in sports these days are if the playoffs started today <laughs> with how crazy the standings are. It's unbelievable how much shifts every day. But yes, absolutely the Timberwolves would have a chance. Very quietly and very inconsistently, these guys have kind of been coming together for the last month or so. Jaden McDaniels is playing his best ever ball. Same with Kyle Anderson. Mike Conley has settled in. Rudy Gobert after taking a lot of slander for the first two months of the season, and a lot of it deserved, has looked pretty much like Rudy Gobert for the last month. And now Carl Towns comes back to raise their ceiling to where it needs to be for them to have a chance. Anthony Edwards is a legit number one option. This is just a good, solid team. They're 3-1 and one against the Kings. I would absolutely not sleep on the Timberwolves winning a playoff series, depending on on what, if any, seed they get. Because you can't trust any of these teams. Rich? Well, I, I think this is a, probably the most intriguing matchup right now because you have somewhat two inexperienced teams. I think Minnesota has some experience. But, you know, if you look at Sacramento, not a ton of experience there. But when you look at Minnesota, right, they've been in the postseason. We know that Conley has been on multiple runs. We know that Gobert has been in the postseason multiple years. So you look at that experience. But I love what Sacramento is doing. I think they do it as a collective unit, right? They have have their offense they had their go-to guy late fourth quarter finisher in, in De'Aaron Fox I think that they have a very well balanced well coached roster so I think it's the Kings in seven and I think part of the reason why they get it done in seven is because Sacramento is going to be crazy in game seven I think the uh, I think the Timberwolves will push them there because of their experience that's the one thing but I think the Kings are the better team Richard I have a very strange take on the Sacramento Kings and you think yeah that they could be favored based on their consistency this season. But I do think that they can be upset and it not be the worst thing ever. And I'll explain why. They're Please. right on track with their organization and their team. Oftentimes, when you have good teams building, first they start developing their young guys. They've developed, they've traded, but they've done pretty well in that developmental game. What comes next? That offense. Right now, the Kings are first in offensive efficiency. So the first two, three years you develop, next three, four years, you know, two, three years, your offense and your chemistry is building similar oh to how my we saw. God. No, 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 similar to how we saw the Warriors really develop into a team, similar to how we saw the Grizzlies, right? They're sort of following that same mold. And then lastly, the hardest thing to get to win in the playoffs and win a championship mm -hmm. is defensive chemistry. The Warriors built that defensive identity maybe seven, eight years into them being them being together. And so even though the Kings might enter the playoffs and that's a win and lose they're still on time because one they have likely a coach of the year and two that defense is the last thing to really mold into form that is that icing on the cake for a championship you know team and Ross, like, why are you looking at me sh shady uh richard i'm looking at you shady because you said a lot but you didn't say anything no what i'm saying is they can be upset but, 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 and it not be but, the worst thing ever but, in the world well okay look just i'm going to correct a little thing one okay. the warriors built their defensive identity like two years into what they did mark jackson had them at an elite defensive level and then they continued to grow so it wasn't that long and i think sacramento kings are building towards mm -hmm. that but ultimately the question is this do the timberwolves have a chance to beat the kings yes or no yeah, they have a chance. That's but also, when's the last yes. time the Kings have been in the playoffs? Well, the Minnesota. They're going to have to learn Minnesota, through experience, Minnesota too. Minnesota just had a, barely got but they their just last Let's see if the Sacramento Kings are able to clinch with the Warriors' loss tonight. 
Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.